Close your eyes for a moment. Imagine stepping off a metallic ladder, your boots sinking into the blood-red dust of a new world. The horizon glows faintly, stretching into infinity. Silent, empty, and alien. A thin wind howls across the barren, landscape, carrying with it the weight of absolute loneliness. For a brief second, you marvel at the view, and then it hits you. Your chest tightens, your lungs burn. You're not wearing a spacesuit. No helmet, no oxygen tanks. Just your fragile, unprotected body standing on the deadliest planet in our solar system. The question is brutal, terrifying, and impossible to ignore. Could you survive even one minute, one hour, or a full 24 hours on Mars? The first 30 seconds. The moment you expose yourself to Mars, your body begins to fail instantly. The atmosphere is so thin, it's practically non-existent. Less than 1% of Earth's pressure. It's made almost entirely of carbon dioxide. Your first desperate breath would be your last attempt at survival. You'd inhale toxic gas, your lungs crying out for oxygen. Within 15 seconds, you'd black out. But before that blackout, something even stranger begins to happen. Because the pressure is so low, the fluids in your body behave differently. Your spit, the moisture on your tongue, even the fluid in your eyes, they begin to boil at room temperature. Not from heat, but from the lack of pressure. Tiny bubbles would form in your saliva. Your tongue would feel like it's fizzing, as though you'd swallowed a mouthful of soda. Except... This is no refreshing drink. It's your body breaking apart. And the swelling. Your skin, still strong enough to hold you together, would stretch as gases inside your tissues expanded. You wouldn't explode, but your body would puff up grotesquely. Your fingers fattening, your face distorting. You'd look like a human balloon, seconds away from collapse. Your brain, starved of oxygen, would begin shutting down darkness would close in around your vision and within moments you'd fall to the ground helpless as mars took its first victory the first five minutes let's say for the sake of horror that you somehow cling to life perhaps you held your breath at first perhaps you're in denial but survival on mars is not forgiving the cold strikes next the average temperature on Mars is minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 62 degrees Celsius. At night, it plunges to minus 195 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 125 degrees Celsius. Colder than any place on Earth has ever been. Your body begins losing heat instantly. Within minutes, your extremities, your nose, your ears, your fingers turn numb, then black. Frostbite sets in. The blood vessels constrict, desperate to save your core organs, but your limbs are sacrificed. Then comes radiation. On Earth, our magnetic field and thick atmosphere protect us from cosmic rays and solar storms. On Mars, there is no shield. You're bombarded with invisible bullets of radiation every second. Each particle tears into your DNA, shredding your cells. Your body trembles, not from fear, but from the collapse of its systems. And five minutes in, you're already less alive than dead. The first hour. Imagine you've somehow made it to an hour. The odds are impossible, but let's keep the nightmare alive. The dust storms arrive. Mars' infamous storms can rise taller than Mount Everest and spread across the entire planet. Even if you're not caught in one, the air is filled with fine, sharp particles of red dust. Each breath you gasp drags this dust into your lungs. It cuts, scratches, and burns like inhaling shattered glass. Your lips split. Your eyes sting. The dust gets everywhere, under your nails, into your throat. Even clogging your nose, breathing becomes agony. Dehydration sets in next. The Martian air is bone dry. Your sweat evaporates instantly. 
Your skin cracks, your tongue swells, and every cell in your body screams for water. Within an hour, you'd feel like you hadn't had a sip of water in days. And then comes something unexpected. The silence. Earth is filled with background noise. Wind in the trees, insects buzzing, birds calling. On Mars, there is nothing. Just the endless howl of thin wind against endless desert. The silence crushes your mind, feeding panic and despair. An hour. In, you're no longer human. You're just a body collapsing in slow motion, a mind unraveling in a prison of red dust and silence. Twelve hours later, the longest night. Now, imagine the impossible. You survive until nightfall. The sun disappears below the horizon, and Mars's true cruelty reveals itself. The darkness isn't like Earth's night. On Earth, the moon and stars offer comfort. On Mars, the night feels alien. The thin atmosphere lets the stars blaze fiercely, sharper than you've ever seen them. Phobos and Deimos, Mars' two tiny moons, crawl across the sky like haunted, misshapen rocks. And beneath it all, you, shivering, gasping, dying. The temperature plummets faster than you can imagine. Your skin crystallizes every breath of icy air stabbing your throat. You try to breathe, but your lungs seize up. The little moisture left inside you freezes solid. Ice forms in your veins. And yet, you're still conscious, still aware. That is the true horror. You can feel your body shutting down, part by part. The radiation hasn't stopped either. It rains down from the sky invisibly, mercilessly. You'd never see it, never feel it. But deep inside, your very DNA is being scrambled beyond repair. Your body, even in its final moments, is being cooked alive by the cosmos. And then comes the loneliness. No voices, no birds, no sign of life, anywhere. Just an empty desert stretching in every direction. The silence becomes maddening. Your mind clings to fragments of memory, family, home, the blue skies of Earth. But the longer you lie there, the more those memories blur into the rust-colored void around you. By the twelfth hour, your mind is nearly gone. Your body is frozen, cracked, swollen, and poisoned. But you're still aware enough to understand one terrible truth. Mars has won. Twenty-four hours later, the aftermath. Now, let's look ahead. A full Martian day, 24. Earth hours has passed. And what's left of you? Your corpse would be unrecognizable. The cold would have frozen your body solid, locking you into a twisted, rigid pose. The lack of atmosphere means there's no weathering, no decay, no bacteria to decompose you, no scavengers to feed on you. Instead, you'd remain preserved. Your skin, once alive, would be stretched and swollen, cracked open in places like dried clay. Your eyes would have burst from the pressure loss. Your lips split apart. Your blood frozen into jagged crystals beneath the skin. 2A. Future explorer stumbling upon you centuries later, you would look less like a human being and more like a statue carved out of ice and stone, a grotesque monument to human fragility. And here's the haunting part. On Earth, time erases us. Bodies return to soil, bones crumble, everything fades. On Mars, you would remain. For thousands, maybe millions, of years. A frozen relic of a failed experiment. A message written not in words, but in silence. This world was never meant for you. So, could you survive 24 hours on Mars without a spacesuit? The answer is simple. No, not even close. The moment you step onto that alien soil unprotected, Mars begins dismantling you. Your lungs, your blood, your skin, your mind. It doesn't happen instantly, but in a cruel, drawn-out sequence, breath by breath, minute by minute. And yet, despite all this, we dream of going there. 
colonies, cities, a second home for humanity, because that's who we are, creatures, who refuse to accept limits, who dare to walk into death's shadow just to prove we can. But let this be a reminder. If you ever face Mars without protection, you won't just be testing your survival. You'll be confronting the very limits of human existence. Mars doesn't forgive. Mars doesn't care. And on that red desert world, death isn't just possible. It's guaranteed. So now you know the brutal truth. Mars doesn't forgive and without protection, you wouldn't survive even a day. But here's the question. Would you dare to try if given the chance? Tell me in the comments below. And if this journey shook you, imagine what else awaits in the universe. Hit that like button, subscribe for more mind-bending survival stories, and turn on the bell so you never miss the next What If. Until then, keep wondering and keep surviving.